Good morning, everybody. So this is DC Universe Online. Uh, some exciting news from DC Universe Online. They have a new DLC coming out, featuring the end of the world, and I think it's pretty good. They're still updating the game. And there are two topics for today. The second will be DLCs, how to do it right, how it's done wrong, and uh, I'm playing a game that does it right, so it's a good start. But the main topic I want to start with today is uh, topic quality. So I'm uh, going to a comment on one of uh, my Star Wars The Old Republic videos. Uh, a German, Germans represent roughly 9% of my traffic, indicated to me that the game's graphics don't look that much better in 720p from 480p. <coughs> so I uh, first want to say that I, I do take... Uh, resolution stuff quality. Uh, I spent a decent amount of time um, in my computer making it better. I spent a lot of time figuring out what softwares I need to use, uh, how to convert. Star Labs things and, and Metropolis, thank you for and stepping in at Metro General. Yeah, as long I, as I, Lex Luthor really is hurting and exploiting people this, for his own gain, we will always need heroes like you. It kind of sucks that some videos aren't actually 720p HD. So this is where I'm going to explain kind of the shady side of things. So this is Batman. Joker's clowns are turning uh, the old amusement amusement mind. If I was put up a video that wasn't in HD, nobody watched. Gotham PD is over. Nobody wants to watch videos that are in HD. The, Joker. the you problem take care, is that take care, some take care games of his clowns will Batman, not Batman, record Batman in HD. Out. So I have on the screen available three videos. The first two are in HD. The third is not in HD. I uploaded the raw file. The first one is the play the the uh, PvP video that is being criticized. The second is uh, Space Marine, the final boss, and the ending. If you don't want to spoil it, don't watch the ending. And the third one is uh, a 480p raw upload of Star Wars: The Old Republic. Okay, so. You can clearly see that my game, my computer system can handle recording 720p on Space Marine. What you see with uh, with with uh, SW Tor is that the quality doesn't actually improve between 480p and 720p. Now, why is that? Uh, well, basically, when you're seeing a lot of high definition videos of Star Wars: The Old Republic, you're either seeing beta videos or you're actually not watching HD at all. Star Wars The Old Republic is a game that is almost incapable of recording HD videos. Which is kind of sad. Most MMOs are like this. There's only a handful of them that support high resolution. So when you look at my screen, you know that I have the best of the best and you know I'm, I'm using it properly. Where the hell is Gotham? Is it over here? Um, this game is being recorded in HD, but when we go to frames, like it's pretty damn low, right? And that's because NMOS have a plague, a really bad plague for high definition. It's really, really hard to make a high definition MO because you need a lot of shit. You need to have um, need to have you know really good computer, which I have. You need to have a a great internet connection, which I have. And then on top of that, you need a great server on, to be on. Now I'm on Space Log on SW Tor, which is insanely high population, and the game, as far as I know, has problems handling more than 40 people at once. And, you know, clusters of like five or six is considered to be pretty hectic. Uh, so going into a war zone where you have 16 people, uh, it can get pretty bad. And when I make my PvP videos, well, I really only want to show the epic stuff. I only really want to show like the big one-on-ones or the big, you know, 8 v 8s So uh, the quality is going to go down a bit. Uh, if I want to show you a really, really high-definition SW Tor video, um, 
I'd show you the opening cinematic. So, why is it like this? Well, with Star Wars The Old Republic, in beta, <coughs> which was a better game, by the way, they had high-res textures in everything that you could turn on, and um, they also allowed for more people in zones, and it just ran smoother. But, just before launch, they realized this was not something they could maintain. The beta was under very specialized circumstances. They didn't have nearly as many people on servers as they were going to have, so they had to cut it down. Do I agree with that decision? I'll say probably just because it made the game come out. Didn't have to delay it, but whatever. That's all part of the past. The problem with this is that it makes it really, really hard for a person to make a HD video of Star Wars The Old Public. Uh, you know, I happen to be on a server that has really, really, really bad ping for me, and so the quality of my filming is going to go down. Uh, I'm convinced I cannot make a DCU of HD film at all, just because... Ah, uh, shit. Metropolis. Just because uh, it's a super server and it's located, you know, 10,000 kilometers away from me, so I don't think it's possible. Uh, do I put out shit quality videos with HD on them on purpose? The answer is yes. So here's kind of like a problem of people. So people are looking through a list of videos, they see one that says HD, and one that says normal. Not HD. People will always click on the one that says HD, no matter the quality of the person in the video. So if someone makes a PvP video, and 95% of smuggler PvP videos are shit, right? They're people who are either like level 30 or level 40, don't know what they're doing, or um, they think they're awesome but they're not. Uh, you have a lot of that. And a lot of the other ones are like, you know, beta videos. They're not really all that accurate. I, had a, I would at least have the dignity to say that's beta when I do a description. But yeah, I'm not I'm not that guy. Um, you know, when you see when you click 720p, you're always gonna get the best quality uh, that can be provided. So, you know, with the SDI Tour ones, like you might as well watch them all in 480p unless you're watching beta videos because they don't really get that much better. You can compare my videos to other people's; they look roughly the same. Um, you know, some people might add in some HD stuff to make it a little more worthwhile to have 720p on, but, you know, you know, I, I don't have time for that. I don't work at a studio. I don't work for a company. This is just being my by myself. Uh, so the other contention is that, um, will I improve this? Um, my thought here is that I will improve it to the best of my ability. Um, you know, can I make Star Wars more high definition than it actually is? Uh, no. But what I will do is when I get bits of server like in any of my videos, where my character's doing some funny things, I'll just not include them in the video. It'll make the videos look better, and, you know, you'll probably miss it on some epic stuff, but, you know, it's not gonna look like crap. Um, this is my last video before I go on a 10-day vacation. When I get back, I intend to do a Smuggler DPS video, and I intend to do a How to PvP as Smuggler video, which will be pretty brutal because Smuggler is actually the hardest one to uh, to PvP level up. So yeah, um, let's just move on. For some reason I can't really remember where or how you get to Gotham, which is kind of embarrassing. 
Just by a little bit. What PlayStation am I supposed to go to, actually? It doesn't tell me. Um. So, where can I go from here? Uh, DLCs. So this is a pretty hot topic uh, in my Star Wars guild. Uh, I mentioned, I put, I made a single comment that I think DLCs are great. And this brought up a lot of anger. Oh, no, DLCs are bullshit, they said. DLCs are stupid. They're just ways for developers to make more money. They're trying to just rob us. They're producing, you know, 50% of a game. And then they're, you know, just putting it out there, and they're making us buy the rest of the game in the form of a DLC. So very quickly, a you know $70 game actually is a $100 game. So a good example of uh, people doing this would be um, uh, Mass Effects and Bioshocks are good examples of this. Um, there's also... Um, Oh, was that new game? King uh, King Crusade? King's Cru it's a new RTS game that came out um, February 12th, <coughs> which wasn't too long ago. And on the same day <coughs> that they released the game, $40 game, and they released two DLCs afterwards, one called Mongols, and the other one's like Shield, something like Shields. It's an aesthetic package. Okay, so this is where people have problems with DLC. The bad in DLC, and I'll start with the bad, is that there are developers who produce games and release games just specifically so they can cut them into pieces and sell them as DLC. They want to transform a game that's worth about uh, 20 or $30 into one that's worth about 60 or $70 to max out their revenues. So this game, uh, you know, I think it's called King Crusade 2, uh, it's something like that. It's a newer game, it's, you know, it's an RTS, I'm not going to play it, cause it's kind of a piece of a game. Might be a simulator, I'm not sure. But, uh, <coughs> this game came out DLC immediately. Now, here's my thought. If this was a $50 game, as in the DLCs plus the game combined are $50, they're only charging you $40, but you want the other package, you pay $10, I'd be fine with that. Because what they're saying is, like, if you want to buy the game, and you just want to play the game, and you don't care about this other stuff, $40. Right? And if you if you want to buy the rest of the game, it's only another $10, I'm fine with that. Imagine, say, Modern Warfare 3. Let's say Modern Warfare 4 3 um, is... I don't know, let's say uh, thirty nine ninety nine only for son of a bitch. Sorry, that's what I was talking about, uh, server stability. And uh, DCU Online does not have it. I'll never be able to record HD videos because of it. If I was just to record this screen right here, I would probably have a HD video. The HD part would be the flickering of the logo in the top left. So, where was I? Oh, yes, Modern Warfare 3. And I did look up. Uh, while it's crashed, the, uh, holy crap, the name of the game that has crazy DLCs is called Crusader Kings 2. And it comes from Paradox Interactive, who are notorious for just bad DLC practice. So, let's, okay, going back to, uh, how you can split up your games and sell them effectively. So, let's say Modern Warfare 3, which was about 60 bucks on launch. And, you know, in truth, if you only want to play the single-player game, it's not worth 60 bucks. If you only want to play the multiplayer game, it's still not worth 60 bucks. So, if they were to split that up into multiplayer and single-player, make the single-player like 20 bucks, and the multiplayer like 40 bucks, well, that's fine, right? It won't stop people from complaining. People are like, oh my god, you know, they're splitting up the game to make more money. Well, well no, dick. If they're doing it that way, they're making... They're splitting it up so that the consumer can get what they want. Now, if, if I was to have the choice there, I would have probably just bought the single player. Because Modern Warfare 3 style, where you get the level up, is not really what I enjoy in multiplayer. I enjoy having an even footing. I don't like feeling that when I kill somebody, that's because I have, you know, better loadouts. 
Yes, because I leveled them. Right? So, if Modern Warfare 3 was split the game that way, that'd be fine. Where it'd be bad is if they said, like, well, you know, it's $60 for the multiplayer, and then the single player is actually 10 bucks. That's kind of bad. There are studios out there who do this. Paradox Interactive make RTS games, and they make European-style ones that are very popular in Europe. Um, and, request you know, yeah, uh, they're really, really bad, unfortunately. <laughs> they do this with this? everything. Has I can't think of... Guests stumbled into my toxic I can't think of a single game around? that they put out so where... So sorry, I can't be there to welcome you in They person. haven't done this. Enjoy the party. Like, they are crooks. It they are criminals. They get away with it. you see these games, you should not only be outraged, you should buy them. Don't support these guys. Uh, unfortunately, their games end up being too popular and it's kind of a lost effort. But yeah, I'm not I'm not supporting those guys. I won't. That's bad DLC. Bad DLC is when they purposely split up the game to it's cheat the consumer. Good fun. Who love this is a lot of games that must do this. And this is no small game. Uh, initially, uh, I accused uh, Blizzard of doing this with um, with StarCraft 2 because they uh, they announced that they had the game done, and then they had the gall to say it was being split into three parts. Uh, what they didn't actually mean, of course, what they meant was that they were working on the sequels, and the whole game, all the, the campaign, would be split into three parts. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, you know, what's good DLC look like? I'm gonna give you one example. One is when they split up the game so that, uh, the consumer's gonna save money, right? I love it when they do that. I think it's a great practice. The other good DLC, and this is another one that gets people pissed off, is when, um, the DLC is designed in such a way one. that the developers actually working on something new. So, a uh, perfect example of this would be um, do, 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 Skyrim. So, Skyrim released is about sixty dollars. Uh, it gave me about hundred hundred hours of gameplay, but then you know it has like a lot of called like infinite options. Like I can play again. I have another 100 hours of the gameplay. Uh, <coughs> if I can like, choose different routes, I can have another 100 hours. Like, the game probably has about, you know, hey, this is hard. and gameplay totals probably about 400 500 hours of the gameplay. No so, it's, the game itself is a good buy. Um, so, they, they rele say they release a, um, Hands up and a DLC. Uh, recently, they released a DLC for high res textures, which was a pretty big deal because the game didn't launch with them. And, you know, this is kind of like a new thing in games where there's not releasing the high res textures, it's just the game out. Nobody wants to end up being like in studios, which went bankrupt. Or not in, uh. Oof. Parrot. Apogee. Or 3D Realms. So, yeah. They put in uh, 3D textures, or the high res textures, which is something that should have been available for launch. And they put it out for free. Right? I agree with that. That's good. And they're also put out Content Creator for free, which is also good. It's something that should have gone out at launch. Now they're working on another DLC, which you're going to have to pay for. The new DLC will feature uh, new missions, some new stuff in the game they can do. It's actually content. So, because of that, they can get away with charging you. I don't really like it. Is it worth it? The answer is yes, because all these DLCs are basically like other games. So my thought is here. Take the game World of Warcraft, right? World of Warcraft makes you pay $16 a month, basically. I think it's like ten dollars if you get a year, fourteen ninety nine if you get, um, if you get uh, a monthly thing or something like that. But anyway, so it's it's basically like you know fifteen dollars a month play a while. 
and you play for two years, and then an expansion comes out. The expansion costs 60 bucks. What is the expansion? The expansion is roughly the same as a DLC in any other game. You get a few more levels, you get a little more content, but that's about it. Wouldn't you rather World of Warcraft just DLC that content? I'm on it! Now, of course, you'd also have to DLC dungeons and new raid packs, but you'd have the choice of buying those. So, like, you know, say, um, they release, oh, I don't know, I have to go back, because I haven't played since, you know, it's probably now the first tier of, uh, the, the first tier of, of Cataclysm. So, let's go with, um, let's go with Wrath of Lich King. So, you, you bought the DLC for the initial, for the very, very initial, um, Listen up. Joker clowns are holding cops hostage over at the old roller coaster. Set of I need you to get got. those men to safety. All the dungeons, all the raids, and you get all this for, like, you know, 15 bucks. As long as you own the core game, you're getting it for 15 bucks. You know, make the levels free, we'll say. Just so that everyone's on the same page. And then, afterwards, the raids being released, you're going to pay another, you know, five bucks for the raids. New dungeons are going to release, you're going to pay like three bucks for the dungeons. And so, you know, the whole expansion, some total, will probably cost the exact same thing as what you paid for in the first place. Which was... Uh, is, you know, does it make it better? Yeah, of course it does. Because when I was doing Ice Ground Citadel progression, I was always kind of ahead. And all the gear from the five band dungeons kind of sucked. It was really bad. And I never had a use for it. I always just did raids. I did the five-man content because it was there and I wanted to see what it was like, but I didn't need to ever see it. Um, you know, like, so if I was to play the game, I would save myself. We need to get the formula for that Joker. And it also encourages them to he's left a trail. Uh, see what you work with find. existing content longer, which some people. <laughs> Well, not. Like. Before I go, I have a little present for you. Well, lots of them but fact. you know, Some it's actually a better formula offices. because it saves people money, well, and fun it also makes people it? less pissed Don't about the content you release. You <laughs> I mean, not everyone's gonna like the new content in DCUO, but it's not something you're forced to have because of a subscription fee. It's something that you have an option for. So this is a really, really good model. The same one that Bethesda uses for their games. Really good. It pissed people off because they feel like that's something that should be included in the game, but in truth, it's not. Like, let's say the life cycle of a development for a game, um, I think it's about four or five years for one of these big AAA titles. Uh, okay, so you have you know, four or five years, and then you're forced to release the game. It might be crappy, it might be bugged, but you're going to fix the bugs later. Um, you have another another you know two year development cycle which we dedicate to DLC. Now, it's not really fair to ask a developer to work seven years on a game. There is almost nothing in this world that has a seven year development cycle. It's rare. Like you can put up a building in under a year. You can make a movie in under a year, but somehow games have this odd place where, since people are expecting pe the game the game developers put in something fantastic, they're putting these ridiculous cycles into it. The brat one that refused to smile. So yeah, I don't I don't think that game developers should be forced to like these massive cycles. Uh, they have a time schedule. Once it's done, it's done, right? Um. So, time for pain, kids. Of course, you know 
this means war. Once the de- it's released, they work on DLC for two years. I mean, should this be released in the game? The answer is no. The reason why it's no is because this is you've already gotten one. a good game. Goodbye, girl world. The game is already great. You already enjoyed it. If they weren't released the DLC at all, you know, you would be fine, right? But the fact that they released DLC is what gets me. Just the fact that it is DLC. Like, you just instinctively feel like, oh my god, this should have been included. In the which it shouldn't have been. The thought is this if you really enjoy a good game, and a good game, by the way, is 30 hours gameplay. People who play MMOs are ridiculous people because they actually expect about um, closer to you know a thousand hours of gameplay. Like they have ridiculous standards. Uh, so yeah, you're looking at about you know thirty to hundred hours of gameplay for a single player game, depending on the genre. Obviously. Time for uh, pain, kids. And yeah, after you've done it, like, you know, do you want, here's what, do you want to pay for a big a $60 sequel immediately, or do you want to pay for DLCs? Now, the immediate sequel will actually be the exact same game, except with minor things. So my best example of this is, uh, the difference between, um, Goodbye, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, which was a <coughs> a uh, first person console RTS game, and I'll say for you know matter of fact, it is in fact to date the best console RTS game to be invented. There is nothing nearly as good as this as far as the RTS genre goes, and they've been working on Battlefront 3 for quite a while now. It's been hit bit on the shelf, and blah, 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 but it's coming out eventually. Okay. A year later, they, they make the game called Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, if you get a comparison between Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, everything's exactly the same. There's no difference. They haven't changed... Uh, the graphics are still exactly the same. The... Time for pain. The gameplay is exactly the same. Go uh, they've added in a couple maps, a big and kaboom. they've put in ha. a different single-player campaign. Does it make it worthwhile? The answer is no. If it was available at the time, which it wasn't, I would have much rather have DLC. I would have much rather them say, like, ah. hey, you want two more maps for, you know, five bucks. Do you want uh, you know, I don't know what else can I say? Do you want the campaign for fifteen ninety nine? And the answer is probably no. I probably didn't want that. Do you want multiplayer support for an additional five bucks? And I'd say, well, oh, yeah, of course I would. I would pay for that. The reason why people really, really hate DLC, no matter what it is, is because. <coughs> They've been burned on it so bad, and no matter what it is, they always feel like they deserve it for free. They don't remember, like, you know, what games were, like, and what games were, like, were terrible. People were producing, you know, 20 Street Fighter 2 games in a period of three years, and selling them massively. So, you know, people hate DLC, well... Honestly, go buy Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 4 Tournament Edition, Street Fighter 4 Turbo, Street Fighter 4 Super Edition, and then tell me that you wouldn't have rather buy those as DLC. Tell me that. And of course, simple answer is, you would prefer them as DLC. So that's my rant about DLC. DLC is good, it is not bad, it is all of the good, it is none of the bad. Tomorrow I will be in, well not tomorrow, two weeks time, two weeks time, I'll be entering Joker's Fun House. See, that's about, so that's the end of my rant, that's the end of my day. Um, like I said, I'll be gone for about ten days, going on a skiing vacation, should be lots of fun. Hopefully I don't get an injury, I do have a weak knee. Um, 
back in 10 days. I don't know what I'll be doing right away. I have some ideas. Um, I want to look at uh, From Holly Dust. Here. It's a game that uh, got really, really good reviews, but looks like a piece of shit. So I'm going to look at that. Three. And, Three. um, I'll probably, some, like I said, some Star Wars stuff. I want to do a Star Wars uh, video on how to DPS as a gunslinger. And also, um, you know, tactics for, you know, doing gunslinger PvP. How you do it with little gear and how you do it with a lot of gear. So, um, we have 10 day break. I can't wait. I'll be back by then. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, you know, subscribe for when I get back. It'll be 10 days time. And in the meantime, I have lots of great videos on the channel you can watch out. Uh, and yeah, that's my day. That's it. Thank you for watching, guys. See you in 10 days.